Well, David, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm so excited. We're going to have such a good conversation. Our yep. pre-interview chat left me buzzing for like <laughs> the whole day because I could tell that you have such, you were like on fire for sobriety. Um, you have such a strong faith and um, you have the capacity to really speak from the heart. And I feel like the language of the heart is something that crosses all boundaries, socioeconomic, um, all boundaries, right? And that's what allows people to feel connected. And I know you do that through your music and stuff. So I'm so excited to have you on. I appreciate it. <laughs> so we're going to start with a fun little lightning round, but like I told you before, it's very slow. (laughs) So, um, are there any books or music or anything like that, that is helping you during this phase of your recovery? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't believe that I'm actually like, I, I've read it every day when I was in rehab. I think I'm just going blank right now, but, um, great. Uh, I think think healing out, no healing after loss. Oh, you know, I think everybody's different in their recovery, but my main thing was, is to not rush for answers and embrace the process. And that's a very cliche thing based on when you're in the, the mix of that, of that, that emotion is nothing but taking over your life. But when I really committed to that, that book was the epicenter of where a lot of this stemmed from and anything else that funneled out of the drain Right. or things that I needed to identify, but really diving into the main thing that caused this whole domino effect in my life. And how can I start there? So sometimes what I would do, I was realizing was I never wanted to go back and face the beginning hard enough, enough just to get by, but not enough. And then once that happened, I knew if I really attacked it, all those other little things, I could start slowly but surely attacking so i would say healing after loss um unfuck yourself um <laughs> <laughs> i have that on my uh yeah on my list but i haven't read it what was about that that you really like i don't know i you know i think one of the most difficult things to admit is you know what you're doing is wrong mm-hmm. especially in addiction it's not like we're unaware that whatever your your, your doc is we're fully aware what we're doing is not okay at some point, especially mm-hmm. right before I feel like that brink before you know it's time to go. So for you knowing all this information and telling yourself and for it to fall on deaf ears is one of the hardest realizations that you weren't willing to listen because the answers are right there in front of you, but everyone has to find out their own way. Such an interesting point. We all know, we all have the answers within us. I really have, you know what I've seen over the years is like such a lack of empathy or compassion or ability to like, actually you said it right in the very beginning when you were talking about healing after loss. And we're going to touch on, uh, I know you've had a lot of loss in your life, a lot of loss, especially recently. Um, But that you were talking, you were speaking to the core root of addiction, which is trauma and unresolved pain. And, and it goes to that fact where when we have unresolved pain, then we are like compelled to use, even though we know what the right thing is to do. It's such a scary, this is a really hard story to tell. And I don't, I've never said this. And I think it was one of the uh, scariest things in my marriage. This is how bad addiction had got me. And I just want to share the story because I think it just goes to show sometimes when I'm having a day where I feel invincible in my sobriety, now what I do is check myself and remind myself five months ago today, I was bawling my eyes out entering detox. Mm. So I always try to put myself in perspective where I was versus just how I feel, but just to use as motivation to stay on track. But you know, my wife had left to go drop our son off and there's this bar, like not even 800 feet across a little restaurant next door, super nice or whatever. And I, my dumb ass didn't time it enough, time it enough to go there and just walk across literally one road. And she was literally in the driveway with like the stare at death. And I just remember looking at her and I was, I was blitzed. I was, you know, 
I, I tried to make light of it, even though it wasn't funny, but I was being dead serious. That's the worst part about it. It was the irony and the pain, I guess, so to speak. And I was like, I was like, yo, God himself could not have stopped me. I know I need help. And the fact that I can't get through one day right now boggles my mind. And I have to unfuck myself and or get back to what and when and why so I can address that to move forward. Because I just looked at it, I was like, yo, God himself could not have stopped me from walking in here. Mm-mm. And that's how I knew it. That's like, yo, I got to get help. Because that's, that's too much. And I was being serious. I didn't want to sound as harsh, but th- that's just... I could not, you know, and you, you shouldn't do your, you shouldn't reward yourself for expectations as an adult to do certain things. And like, I, I feel like, well, I've been sober for six hours already. That's an expectation, brother. It's like, you're so, supposed to be sober. <laughs> yeah. So when you start saying stuff like that, it, you start really paying attention to what's coming out of your mouth. Like that's not normal, bro. So I think that mm-hmm. had a lot to do when I was, I always say this, man. Amir is one of God's greatest teachers if you're real enough to look at it, you know what I'm saying, and really see what's going on. Because a lot of people pass by the mirror. They're not, they're not ready to really see what's in front of them. So when I was able to get real with myself and say, yo, bro, what happened to you? Okay, this happened. Okay, why are you mad about it? You feel cheated in life? You feel like people were taken from your life that did absolutely nothing? After all the years you busted your ass for to see a view that many people cannot ever get a chance to see, and you want it to be a pillar and representation that it is possible. And if you don't get that chance through me and my message and what I believe in, with hard work, faith, family, resilience, <laughs> only takes one yes to change your life. Be happy, free yourself, do what you love. You can follow this journey with me. For that all to be taken away from me in a blink of an eye, that took me years to get. I was a perfect storm. I mean, I, I was the I was the perfect walking walking shit show. I mean, ready to hit you know grounds you know bottom. But I was so good at acting because I'm a singer. I put this beautiful smile on. It's a wrap. You don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> That's just what I do. You have a beautiful smile. Did you have uh, braces or are those natural? No, those are definitely I had braces. Then I've been there. Yes, <laughs> okay. in my real. But I, I, I was like, because damn, I, <laughs> I didn't. Braces. I didn't. See. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, no, I really appreciate that. I mean, you said so many good things just in that, you know, the, the merit. And it's so interesting because it's like we need both. We need the compassion, but we also need the hard boundaries too. And that's what maybe, you know, I love the I love the kind of message of unfuck yourself. It's like that real, honest, confrontational um boundaries that, you know, it's I'm like glad. they're yeah. That that might have that just clicked in my brain that I've never heard. That is something because I just do you have kids? Two boys, yeah. I felt my mom come through you with that because I honestly to this day have not even thought about it like that. I have been very harsh on myself. I don't yeah. think I've ever really gone, you know, the, we talked about the easy on. I've never really gone so easy on me because I've always been in the position of I got to get from point A to point Z when it came to my music career. Right. So I never took the time in my life to focus on David Cheney and let him heal. I was always so focused on the agenda of David Corey. It wasn't until the pandemic came where I felt like whatever you believe in shifted my life. The pandemic was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I know it's different for everybody else. And I'm not talking to anybody that had financial issues and stuff of that nature. I, I fully understand that was difficult. I meant more of that David that does this, David Corey, plane here, plane here, drive here, the bus here. I was forced to sit still with myself and deal with everything. So that that was the time when I got to do what you were saying. Like, hey man, chill. Like, you're a human. This, I know you normalize or minimalize the trauma because you have to get on and put on a show, but that's almost like dehumanizing who your, your your kindred spirit is as far as like it's hurt it's broken right now that's okay yeah. and I knew that that was okay I, I thought like that was I mean I'm not trying to be funny or say a rude word but I feel like well, I ain't a pussy like I, I can I can handle this and that's how I always felt and once that levee broke the tears it was like when Moses part of the sea is just the rain is this way and that way and it was flowing so you know I needed that 
That is such a good point, by the way. Thank you for the compliment of the mom vibes. You've said that to me in our pre-interview chat. And I was like, I know that you and I have both lost our moms. So that felt like the biggest compliment that you could have ever said to me. Um, I was like, can I, can I adopt you? <laughs> That's so sweet. I was like, oh my God. But, um, I almost lost track of my point, but, uh, yeah, it is, you know, I think crying and acknowledging pain is the real courage and the real bravery because it doesn't take any courage to suck it up and to hide out and being vulnerable. That is strength. And I think our world has it so confused. And I know that men especially are conditioned from a young age to be tough. I was just having this conversation. I, I really am built pretty rock hard. I, I really think a lot of it has to do with my, my mom was like, oh my God, my best friend, my manager, my assistant, my, my you just name it. She was like, Aww. she was my epicenter to understanding the, what a well-balanced, well-rounded human being looks like that has fun, but works harder to have those moments where she can have more fun than the average. And that comes from a level of sacrifice. You know what I mean? And I understood what that was, but I, I, I honestly didn't know how deep I know I'm a, I know I'm a deep person. I know I'm, I can get deep on any level with whoever wants to talk about anything, but I didn't know how deep this pain has run because this is the longest I've been sober in my adult life. And I, what, let's just say, I'm just, I want to be hundred percent accurate so I can put this in perspective to anybody listening. 18, I've always done things recreational, but I was an athlete. So it's like, you know, when it was there, it was there. I was the dude trying to get women and play sports. So I didn't, I, I, I didn't really, if I did it, I did it. It was nothing. I didn't have an issue. I went to college, regular college shit. You might have a party once a week, but it was nothing that ran my brain. So I would say, I would say 25 because I, I was on X Factor. I turned 26 on the show, I think. Wow. So, yeah. So I would say like 26, I think I turned 26, 27. So I can't remember what anything feels like now. Like, I don't know because I've been, I mean, I can only imagine how many brain cells I killed. It's not funny. It's just like, I just don't, you know, Were I can't. Were you just numbed out the whole time? Is that what uh, you can't remember? Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's hard to compare drunk emotional thoughts to like sober in tune in touch with how I feel now. I think now it's just, I'm more man enough to revel in how I, I pay attention to how I feel more, but there's yeah. a weird numbness being sober about it too. So when it gets dark of a thought, it's more like, but you're still here. It doesn't die. I, I feel like the alcoholism, as much as I thought was taking away the pain, it damn near amplified it because once you keep going down the rabbit hole, you know, for someone like me that was, you know, I'm blacking out and you don't stop. So what can be a, a pure, honest cry over a couple of drinks? You know, I'm not, you know, you know, uh, what's, what's the saying? Uh, 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 one is, um, one is not enough and a thousand, one not no, one, a thou one is too money and a thousand is not enough. Yes. One is <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. I, I think, um, it was really hard to, um, decipher, was it as bad when I was drinking or mm -hmm. is it worse or better now that I'm not, because I feel like I've matured in five months rapidly in the aspect of how I formulate and put things together. So I just pray now more that like, the obsession, it's not, I don't wake up and, oh my God, I gotta, I'm married, I got kids, I'm 36 years old. I'm a self-made businessman. I have things going on in my life that keep me very happy outside of what I thought I could never get out of. But if anything, it's me going on a vacation with my wife and we're at the beach like normal people would be that have earned the right and respect to be there with their family, friends, and have a couple drinks in celebratory fashion. I think I just get more irritated, like, wow, it really got that bad that you can't even do this anymore. And I'm over it. I just remove myself. Hey, babe, I'm going to go to the gym. Or, hey, babe, let's go take a walk. That's how I get out of it. I don't, yeah. 
I don't get too high on the highs and I don't get too low on the lows anymore. I try to stay right here. There so, but I think that's really the only thing anymore. It's just like, God damn, like, huh? well, whatever. That's not doing this for me. That's not doing this for me. That's not doing this for me. And I know that you probably said this before. One of the hardest things was when I sat down to rehab was like, damn, the concept of forever. I can't even think about that. That's why the one day at a time thing, you think everything is so cliche, but when you realize that's why they're called cliches, they apply. Yeah. So. It's so funny. Like when you have the experience, you're like there, like it resonates, it hits on a whole nother level. When you have the actual experience, you're just like, oh no, it really is. It really does have to be one day at a time. I'm glad you said something too about empathy, man. Um, I'm in a unique situation as far as the music industry from me intertwined with addiction the trauma was at every angle in your life, particularly that that's that means the most to you was all tied into one. So everything happened at once. Mm. You dealt with, you know, just to say betray backstabbing, betrayal, janky people in the music industry, the death of your parents, watching what fame does to people trying to get next to you at every second of the day, trying to leech and vulture off you. That's either to take from your energy because there sucks, be a part of something because they're not a part of something all that every day and in 2022 the most soulless moralist industry in the world where you will literally see people do anything to whore themselves out to get a dollar that's a very hard thing to compete with and decipher what's real versus what do you want from me then on top of the fact of dealing with addiction so you got fame the industry bullshit betrayal of the closest ones to you i don't want to say the name but we all don't go through that. it pay mama drama you know what i'm saying and then your parents dying it's just one person can only take so much before they break and become the very thing you fear and you decide to play victim when i'm just like yo i've arrived and then you add addiction on top of that i was a monster i was gonna say i wanted to ask you about that too because when we were talking before i was sort of you know trying to put myself in your shoes and think how how would I know like we need each other in sobriety right That's, like yeah. we we don't get so we don't do this thing alone and so how do you decipher who you can trust and like I, I know you need a support system right like you your wife can't I know she's really important to you and she's been a pillar in her family but I know um, she can't be your higher power right so how do you how do you know who to trust and do you have several people um, how does that work for you that's a great question i think i said this to you last time i cannot wait to address this because i've never been asked from an outside entity from a pure space genuinely like you're like yo how and to be honest with you we talk about it every day she's like babe you're such a sweet person you have such a big heart and your experiences have hardened you. I just don't want that to be who you live in forever because you are a sweet soul and it's like you overcompensate because mm -hmm. your experiences are so real it's that I don't not understand where you're coming from, but do you really want to live in that hardened space forever? So when I tell you everybody's a suspect in my head as far as my mentality, it's a gift and a curse because there are good people out there. And I remember that for the first time when I went to rehab. Cause I, you know, I'm like, yo, everyone's out to try to get me in some capacity. How do they finagle their way into my life? And it's like, yo, I don't know you like that. I don't owe you like that. And let's just kind of keep it like this. And when you come out of the fire and you can still see the smoke coming off your shoulders, the last thing you want to do is re have repeated behavior. So when I tell you I've cut off every single thing in my life that's been toxic to me, including alcohol and people, yes. now it's so fragile when I try. It's, it's, it's literally, I have a playbook in my head, but it's exhausting because I don't want to have to think about that all the time. Yeah, I think it's fair to, you know, um, I've personally been going through a, you know, my mother died nine months ago. So, and I want to talk to you about how you're processing grief. But, um, I think, and I know you've experienced a lot of death in your life, a lot of loss, and yeah. that does have a way of clarifying the bullshit. And cool. right. I have found like recently I've been through going through this process of releasing people with love that, um, that are 
that make me feel uncomfortable. Like I am aware of being uncomfortable. Uh, the inter- So are you, are you more sensitive to your inner intuition and you can tell who yeah. cares about you genuinely? Yeah. I told, I told, uh, I told my wife this morning, I was like, Hey, listen, I don't need a gold star. I don't need it broadcasted. What I continuously and constantly do for others out the kindness of my heart that I haven't even done for some people that I've known longer, maybe even more well-deserving, I will continue to always do if I feel it is reciprocated and genuine. But I know now if I tell you, hey, in my sobriety, where I'm headed in my life, this does not make me feel good and I cannot be a part of it. So respectfully, I'm sorry, but we cannot do business or I'm sorry you feel that way, but this is what's best for me and my family. That's how I'm dealing with it now. Because the old days have been like, yo, brother, fuck you. I don't <laughs> care if I see you lose my number. And if you pull up around, like that's how it used to be. You'd be mad now, about it? Oh my God. I just <laughs> out on people because the worst thing you can do is disturb somebody that's grieving that's an addict. Oh my God, yeah. I was a monster. And the, some, the, the worst part about it was some of it was warranted and some of it wasn't, but I didn't care. I literally felt like I was a rebel without a cause. And mm. the, the, the only thing that I was able to keep intact that I never destroyed was my talent and the people in my close knit vicinity that I work with that have become family over the years I never destroyed those bridges those were always there and they've been super empathetic in there for me because they would be with me in the studio every day and they'd be like yo I know you drink but you were they they didn't even know I'm with these people all the time because it's always you know laughing and joking so I was able to keep my act together until I literally couldn't until I was damn near looking like a dying skeleton, anorexic looking, uh, stumbling, mumbling, people would start noticing. This dude's only online from seven in the morning at the gym at like eight, make posts to like one, two. But once that two, three o'clock marker comes, I'm, you, no one knows where I'm at. And so you, were I, you in the end, were you drinking every day? Yeah. I, by okay. the time I rehab, I was drinking about a handle a day. Ooh, that's, that's a lot. Any dude, bro, like, I, I really do feed off adrenaline. I, I, I operate at a very, very high frequency of vibes, music, and adrenaline, like on a whole, like, <laughs> you kind of have to, that's kind of your thing, right? Yeah. And, um, that for the drinking aspect to give, put that in perspective, I wake up, I go to the gym, excuse me, at that point, you got you to sweat out the toxins to start your day again, basically. So at that point, is it really helping my fitness? fitness? No. no. I'm literally trying. It was a process. Recycle the toxins, get them out, start the day, shower, email, be it. Because I know my time frame is small, right? So yeah. I'm exhausted. Busy. The worst part was is, okay, well, everyone's not going to be available when you are, DC. So when people would call me back, I might be coming down off my high kind of moody right or I don't answer they take it personally I call them back the same time like yo dude I told you not to call me here but I'm like maybe in my brain I'm like I gotta show them that I still care so there was a lot of things where I, I had to I had and have to forgive myself that I probably could have asked a lot better that's been tough too forgiving self myself. forgiveness yeah yeah that's a, bit, that's, that's a big deal let me ask you something um I want to take you back a little bit because Um, what I know of your background is that you were adopted. You were in, uh, you're from Brazil originally, and you're in an orphanage for a little, a very, a little while. And then your parents adopted you, brought you to the U S and you were raised here, but your parents both died, uh, within two years of each other. Uh, your mama got sick and, um, what died three months after her diagnosis. Yeah, it was, oh my God. I'm like, and now, you know, it's crazy, man. I don't even entertain. I don't have the time anymore. I, and this is where I'm working on trying to be more empathetic. When you go through stuff like that in the beginning of this journey, I don't know if you remember, but for me, man, I'm like, I, I put my hands up. I tell my wife every day, like, look, bro, I wish bad on no human being. I want to see us all win. 
you got the same 24 hours. There's enough money out here for you to figure out something you love, but respectfully, leave me be while I'm in this process. I done been oh, through yeah. one. I'm not your teacher. Like I'm just in a very protective mode right now because I know what people are willing to do for a buck and anything that I see that gives me PTSD of what I just got out of, mm-hmm. I run. Yeah. I use my wife as she protects me. You know I'm saying, cause she, it's just, I thought, you know, I, it felt like I was an orphan all over again when they both died. And I just, your, your father passed away two years later from a heart attack on Christmas Eve. I was wild. I, Where were you when you found out? Um, that's a wild story. And you know, I've been very silent about the background stuff that happened. You know, made a horrible decision to have a child when I was drinking. That's not a smart idea, right? Um, and doing it with the wrong person that has an agenda. And I think all those things at once when my dad died, and I saw what happened when he died and certain people in my life that I thought were going to be there for me, showed me who they really are. And when someone shows you who you are, believe them, right? Right. Something clicked in my brain where a level of insanity literally ran my life. Mm. I don't know how to say this, but it's almost like when I woke up, it's just like the analogy of with my mom with cancer, like I saw the progression of the disease taking over her. It's where you get a glimpse of Carolyn, but like the disease had taken her over completely. That's exactly how fast the progression of, of me becoming a horrible human being. And it's not that people didn't understand because I have 55 year olds now hitting me, 60 year olds about, hey, I just lost my mom. I'm like, God damn, bro, I'm 30, I'm, I'm 30. Like, you know, like you're just, so I just, was, I, I hated the world. I hated everybody. I was so miserable and I want everyone to feel how I felt. And the only thing that kept the glimpse of the human that people loved, that was a good person that would go out of their way to give them a dollar, give them a place to stay was music. Mm-hmm. Music's where I was able to put my pain into a safe place. I feel like I can express myself in three minutes better than I could for five hours. Mm-hmm. You feel at peace in me because I don't cheat my emotions when I, when I talk, but when I sing, you can feel it from a different perspective, but I became everything I never wanted to be. I became everything that I hated and I became everything that I would say, look at that. I'm I'm never going to be like that. Right. And it's very humbling where now I'm just happy that I woke up and I could brush my teeth and take a walk outside and say, what are we doing today? Another day to be great. Another day to gain some more knowledge. And, you know, my goal for this too is I think I was in rehab aspect. I think the way I look, I think what I do, I think all those things were stacked against me so high that, oh, he's not going to stay. So I was like, let me tell you something. I bet you like a challenge. I, I was like, if I can take the music hustle mentality that I made literally something out of nothing, I can stay sober and I dare you to bet me because you will do not bet against DC as that was when I started creating the positive like got my first smile back and I was like bro you can do whatever you put your mind to bro I know it's hard but it takes one second I don't know what that uh there's something I know you know because you I I have beyond admiration for how long you've done it that just seems like one of them fairy tales you read of a library that you find off the side of the road so you are a uh, oh don't they say it, it's like a something within that second to make that decision to choose to with your brain it, it's so it's like when you are about to use or that split decision split yeah. second yeah yeah between there's a nothing standing between you and that next drink or no nah. and you know another thing too and i think i told you about this I, man, God is so good. I, I, I have such a dope life. Like if I never did music, I got the most amazing woman in the world. I got beautiful friends. 
then I then if we want to talk about music, I have music. I have years and years of great friendships. I'm just a happy person, minus the stuff that took place. But yeah, I um like there's there's nothing at this point that could ever get me to go back to who I was. Is it tough? Hell yeah. Like hell yeah, because that's when my ego comes into play. And oh, that's there what it is. That's what it's like, oh man, you know, your bills are paid, or you know, you have a beautiful this or that, 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 this, or you're not like them, or maybe you maybe in a couple years, or that's that's this the, the the devil ego is that's one of my worst things in my brain. Just talk. But you know what? I, I noticed something about you um earlier that um you really go out of your way to be humble and gracious and i have found that that usually comes from somebody who has the self awareness that the ego is like the ego is the enemy right that your your ego is not your amigo no i like that <laughs> no it's very true man like i have to i i check myself daily just I because to, i'm yeah. bro that's not okay. That's not cool, dude. Yeah, you could do that, but who's gonna pick up the pieces? Yeah. You wanna do that again? When I think about where I was, that's one of the scariest things being sober I have ever experienced in my human body. I know the losing my parents is one experience, but I'm like, when I, if I sat here long enough with you, and you were to watch my mannerisms, but I didn't know you were watching, and I actually dove into like, how the fuck did I get here to Pittsburgh through all that shit? I would legitimately have chills because yeah. that alone just shows me if you hold on and you believe that it can't rain all the time, right? get through it. And yeah, I just have some hope. And I tell you the music that I was singing throughout all this was the soundtrack to my life. That was everything that I was going through. And when I finally came out and admitted that I was sober, everyone was hit. They're like, ah, I had no idea. I was like, bro, yeah. I've been screaming in a crowded room for years. I don't know what else I had to tell you. I've talked about suicide before. Mm -hmm. I remember the day I never really told that story. But that, yeah, I had a whole plan. I sent you goodbye. Were, you, were, you had a plan and everything? Did you write a note or how far did you take it? So. And this is such as, uh, you know, to anyone that, 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 that that's sad, man, because I'm getting emotional. That's, that's hard because, like, mm -hmm. that's a real thing, you know, and. So painful. It is because I was in the gym. And I remember, like, it was yesterday. Trainer I'm really good friends with. His name is Glenn. He was sitting there. You know when somebody's crying or going through something, but you don't say anything, but you're there next to him just to know that they, it's like, I don't know, it's like the unspoken, like he just like got on the presence. Show. Yeah, like I'm without him. With you. Yeah, without him saying it, like, yo, I'm here for you. Yeah. Because everyone's like, and another thing too that's unfair that I felt really mad about was we all go through shit. Everybody, yeah. every, the thing that I didn't appreciate about what I was going through is that it was broadcasted because I'm a, artist so it's yeah, like I, high visibility high visibility which is why now i'm so protective it's like dog right. i just left alone it's nothing personal if you take it that way i can I, let me tell you some of the things i've been told on my musical journey that would make you cry and never come outside because not everything is yes you know that's <laughs> it's it. more no than yes right God, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like dog like that's nothing but you know i, I had sent um I think like three or four texts, put my phone on airplane mode. My best friend, who was the first person I met when I came from Brazil to America, that the best man at his wedding, like that's my brother. Like everyone knew this is how sick my alcoholism was. And this is how crazy that I couldn't even see how bad it was. And even if I did, if I went five hours without drinking, I see, I told you I got it. I'm fine. Like, super denial, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the most denial ever. Like, <laughs> And uh, I, there was where my house was, it was a circle, it was a loop, right? In Maryland, fire, seafood, all the shit's on the water. So it's like 
everyone knew my loop. I, you know what I'm saying? I start here, start here. Some days I'd only stay at one. It just depended. But once I said that goodbye text, they got in their car and I pulled out of this, I pulled out of the spot. Goodbye? Yeah, I was like, I'm out. Um, and uh, I put my phone on airplane mode. I guess they got in his car, him and his wife. Um, and I'm pulling out glory. I'm hammered. Like, so everything is paranoia. So I, I see this car like behind me, right? Like going like this, like, can, like, I'm like, I'm yelling. I'm like, get the fuck. And I start speeding. I'm drunk, right? Which is horrible. Now I think it's a cop. I'm like, fuck it. I'll get pulled over. So where I was going, I was just going to my parents' gravesite. I was going to say, oh, no. Yeah. And that was the first time we cried together in my car. It was like, it was beautiful. Him, me, I never told anybody the story in my life. And um, that was the first time that I had thought about going to rehab. And it, at that point, I hadn't tackled anything. So it obviously had gotten out of control where rehab was necessary, but I was too immature to, to handle it. I just, I wasn't ready. Yeah, I mean, that, I don't know if that's maturity as much as it is um, like heart sick. You know what I mean? It's like, there was so much, I know that you've had a lot of, a, you know, that's really traumatic to lose your parents and mm. everything that you went through. And I, I wonder, um, was rehab the first time you had an opportunity to really process your grief? When I moved to Pittsburgh, the first time I went to Dream Life, because I went for 14 days, but I didn't finish the program. I finished it this time. Um, you went twice? Yeah, I went to Dream Life uh, right after it was, you know, cool. Before, I think, No, I went to Dream Life before the pandemic, right? Okay. Right when I came to Pittsburgh in 2020. Um something along the lines my, my little blurry from there but I did go in 2020 yeah, that, those timelines are always a little fuzzy <laughs> yeah you know, you know, I just want to be very clear but <laughs> yeah but I she was, was on drugs though <laughs> oh my god yeah it's hard I, to get a clear timeline yeah. that's okay we'll just say that the second time you were there <laughs> uh, yeah I, I think the um now like if I had to go into a rehab facility I know everything about it at least I feel like I do. Cause I mean, like I, I was so nervous about every other thing except focusing on just being sober. And I tell people all the time, you start to realize how much the general consensus doesn't understand how bad addiction really is and what it really is. Like my wife always tells me like, yo babe, they don't know how bad it was. They mm -hmm. don't know how dark it really got. They don't know how many times, you know, apparently my wife, you know, there was a point two weeks before I went into rehab that I've never spoke on this either, where she had videos of me, like when I was blacked out, where I'm screaming the devil's name and I'm like laid super awkward. Just like that, huh? Yeah, type shit. Like when this, you know, I was reading something and watching this lady say it, but it's, it's a reason why they call them, you know, good wine and spirits, you know, yes. like it's deep. It's really deep. And I started noticing a lot of shit, like just dreams with the devil. Like this is really, and to see it taped, like I'm having a whole outer body experience. And, you know, I think another thing too, minus my wife and my close friends that love me, one of the main reasons besides it being for me first was, this is going to be real interesting for you. I'm going to fuck your head up real quick. One of the hardest things that I cried so hard, damn near broke my hand over, like just drunk because I'm like, I know I gotta go, and but this is my last lash out to the air or God or whoever was around. I was like, do you think your parents would be proud of the man you are right now? And then I would say, and that's that's when the that's when the evil side of me would combat with thinking drinking's okay to keep on us. Yeah, but fuck that. Do no, do they know what they did to me when they left this world? Do they know what they left me with? Do they know what baggage and pain and addiction and you don't fuck like that's when I got combated when I'm like fuck that. Like it was literally bad versus evil on my shoulders and my brain. And yeah, when when you cry so hard that it hurts physically, I think I've kind of teared out a little more where I can start thinking of things a little bit more calmer, even if they hurt, because I 
Exhausted, maybe, huh? Yeah, man. Just imagine the closest ones to you betraying you. Imagine people always asking for something, always trying to come into your life because of who you are and what you do. At that moment when I was like thriving, like this is like the bit, like this is my moments. This is those moments that you're in. You got your dad out there, at, you know, 10 o'clock. Come on, 20 more push ups. You know, Jacob and I, I was already been up for six hours. <laughs> like all those little moments. Yeah. One second too early, one second too late, all those things. And you, here you are. Not good There's enough. Kid that said, look, my pop, I'm about to take y'all on a wild ass journey. But I thank you for encouraging me. You know, it's really hard to go back in time. I think the part that's really promising now is, is that we have the ability to inspire or save somebody's life through sobriety and be there for somebody. Oh, yeah. I've become way more open and patient to listen to other people's stories. And I think the one thing that I learned, because I was that dude, you could be, Miss Arlena, you could be screaming from a goddamn mountaintop with every speaker from Radio Shack, the Best Buy in your hand, <laughs> screaming, David, go get help. But mm -hmm. if you don't want to, your words can only mean so much at a certain point. Right. That's kind of a really, I had to get real. And, you know, I'm very blessed that I have, um, I'm very blessed that I have people that love me and I had something to look forward to when I left rehab because seeing people in there say that they felt more safe and if they leave rehab that they're going to come, that they're going to die. That was really hard to hear and see. Yeah. Makes you count That's your blood. Real. Yeah. I mean, people die every day of this. Yeah. Every day. Like we're the lucky ones that, and I don't, sometimes I wonder why, but, um, I think, you know, somebody like you that has the capacity to check yourself, be like rigorously honest, I'll bet you're like maintaining that balance of, you know, the compassion to like, that is such an important piece to validate and process your pain, but still hold yourself accountable. I just, I know it sounds crazy and, you know, you losing your mother too. One of the easiest self things is like, these people saved you and gave you, and I, I wouldn't even be here. Like, you know, I sue acts of selflessness. Like my birth mother at 14, making an adult decision to give me the ability to see new life and have a better one that, that she could give me and admit that. And, and that's, 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 that's huge. And to not even be old enough to pick, like if I wanted to, Hey, I want those ones, you know, for them to take me over here. It's just a simple question. Would your parents be happy with the way you're acting? Mm. And then that's really, it's really that simple for me when I put it in perspective. I just think the hardest first step was just, and I, I used to tell my wife all the time, like, but don't you understand why I am the way I am? Do I sound crazy? Is what I went through deep enough to understand why I went off the deep end? It's because it's not just one thing. I just never considered myself an addict because alcohol is so normalized and drugs in my, in my industry. Well, yeah, everywhere, really. I mean, our culture is so infused with yeah. alcohol everywhere. I was in tech sales and for fuck's sake. It's like my, yes. my VP would be out all night drinking and show up to an 8 a.m. meeting loaded, still yeah. drunk from the, it's everywhere. But you know, it's so interesting. It's how the circumstances are different, but the feelings are all the same. Those feelings of self-loathing. And I wonder, I know you're, you know, five months in, you're growing in leaps and bounds you know, we have this need to be understood. Do you feel that the rehab process um, or your continuing growth has allowed you to understand yourself and find that compassion and empathy? I mean, obviously every day is a work in progress. It's just, it's tough to dive into. Um... It is tough. It's tough because it's like, some days I laugh, like, I don't remember laughing at stuff like this or like, oh, I didn't even know I appreciated this. Like, I have not right. taken time in my adult life to literally slow down enough. And, you know, I, think about this. How many times when we're fucked up and we're out doing what we do is like, you know, you posting on Instagram. Like, oh, yeah, man, last night was lit. Yeah, girl, it was lit. I love you so much. <laughs> 
but did you really experience it? Because you interpreted it at that moment that you did. I'm telling you, this is the first time I've experienced it. The way this chapstick, anything that you can think of, like it's she 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 laughs sometimes. It's just like I was like, yo, I don't remember the last time I seen the sun come down sober, and that's the pathetic. But that's what I was going through. It's so funny. Everybody has like this experience in early recovery where they're like, wow, the trees are so green. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like that moment when you're like, yeah. you're like waking up to yeah. reality. Can I be honest with you? You're bringing a different light to what I do in the aspect of the people you see on Instagram that might be in the club every night. Maybe they do have an issue. We don't know. We have no idea because we don't know them personally. But what I do know is no one knew how deep mine went, that it controlled my every movement, time slots of when I'd work, time slots of when I wouldn't be available. I thought I needed alcohol to do everything. So I think you're bringing awareness to just how bad it is. And because I felt so alone and so unsafe, that ego of that ego of uh, Tupac middle fingers out the window <laughs> yeah. was a, a way of life that I used as a coping mechanism to survive. Well, there it is. That's it's a survival skill, you know, uh -huh. and in recovery, it's about, you got to feel it to heal it. I think that's why it's so hard. I just, I said, I, I made a promise to myself. I was like, I will never allow anything or anyone to make me feel this low again in my life. But I wasn't understanding that, okay, well, that's a true statement, but you're killing yourself with alcohol. So if you can knock that out of it, then maybe you'll be all right. And I, I feel great. I look more youthful. I have more energy. There's you're just very no healthy. You're like glowing. You're so happy <laughs> to be sober. It is. I appreciate it. I, I, I just feel better. I just... Sometimes it, you know, life is a ladder. When you get to the next step, you're at the bottom of it. So as I keep doing this, now I'm at the stage where we just went to uh, see Chris Brown. I don't remember the last time I've been to a concert and haven't been blitzed. Sober. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. So I just kind of told her every emotion. She's like, what are you feeling? Like, you know, and I was like, I just, I'm not just in my, you know, like, Chris is my, you know, so I, I was entertained to a point where I didn't have enough time to think about what I normally would, but that's the exception for me, right? Right. But, right. you know, I'm performing September 10th, this huge gala fashion show. I don't remember the last time I performed sober in my life. So, and I should have said this earlier, the biggest thing, and I guess if you want to, and this is good perspective because narcissistically or selfishly I don't know how you want to look at it but music isn't just what I do it's it's who I am who too you are yeah so I don't remember in my entire adult life and I've been singing since I was five years old my dad built me a stage I don't remember what it's like singing sober ever 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 I cannot go back that far and equate there's too many brain cells dead and there's too many years. there's no way and it's a feeling right so these past three months have been rigorous of just sing, David. Just like, don't think about it. Okay, I pay attention to every feeling. I was, I felt myself get nervous just to go see a concert. So then I'm singing the national anthem on Sunday Night Football, the Kansas City Chiefs game. That's like, eight. yeah, I have. Is that record? Did you already do it? Oh, it's no. coming up. Coming up live. Yeah. <gasps> oh my God, I'm so excited for you. That's like my I, favorite I, song ever. Yeah, it, uh, uh, I even, and you uh, said something too, like having that self-awareness. I told my wife this, no one, I was like, baby, you know what? She said, what's up? You know, when I do something, I put my best foot forward. I'm about to start taking voice lessons again. She said, what? I was like, I've been <laughs> voice lessons. She was like, I, I, and she's like, yeah, tapping back into the element of that brick by brick. Uh, teachable. Truth. Yeah, remain teachable and give me the self-confidence that mm. I need through my sobriety because it's different when you oh shit yeah all right come on that's the self 
liquid courage. The, the liquid courage, the fake. I mean, well, people could say it's fake. I mean, it worked. I mean, I, I you know, it, does work. it does work. I can't deny it. It's just, yeah, it works. That's it, why people do it. Yeah. I think, and tell me if I'm wrong, because I think, I just feel like alcohol is one of them slow deaths that oh, can turn. Yeah. I feel like it's a slow death overall, but it can catch you up to, all right. Well, this ain't doing it. You got some blow. Like it's just a progressive. Progressive, yeah. And I honestly, no one believed me. I took for the. I swear to God, I don't know why the facility. Well, when something had took place, I had a fake test come back that I had done oxy, and there's like a one in seventeen thousand chance that I was telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were doing it. I never did any other drugs like that. Wow. We we. Just like the way it made my my throat feel, like I could vape oh, right. Yeah, now. it did something for my asthma that I've never experienced. And I don't have bad asthma, but I was like, damn, I can vape, but I can't do this. So I might hit it once in a while. We had to play, man. I can't, I can't. Yeah. but <laughs> but like I never. It was I knew exactly what this was gonna do. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly how many get me to this state stage of David. This many for this stage. Sometimes when I was grieving and uh, I'll be by myself and like the weather was dull, I'd be like, yo, I, I just want to be emotional today. I'm going to get fucked up and bump Purple Rain by Prince all day long. And I don't know. I just really. Process it. Well, yeah, there is. I mean, it's funny how like we suppress all our feelings. Right. And then we start using, especially alcohol. It's like everything releases like a volcano. It's crazy. It's unreal. I am. Um, yeah. I never wanted to believe it was as bad as it was, but you know, I'm, my new uh, project that's coming on my birthday on October 8th is called Coming Home. Oh, it's coming home. Oh my gosh. So it's going to be a picture of me um, walking up with flowers to the grave site and it's in black Ooh. and white that are uh, in color of the flowers. Yeah. But you know, I feel like the, I was always so scared to face the root and I just feel like, you know, my that cause yeah like I can come home and have a conversation and everything and create new memories and be proud of this is a sober conversation with y'all I went through a lot we went through a lot I was I had a beautiful life ups and downs and everything but you know I had to lose myself to find myself again and I just know if you guys were here I know none of this shit would have happened and that's something that life isn't fair and I have to realize that and focus on the family that I do have and how blessed I am and that I have the ability to wake up and do what I love. And but my mom used to say something in church to me when I was young, it still resonates. Our favorite song was, um, uh, what was it called? I just had it, Eagle's Wings. Um, Eagle's Wings? Angel's it, Wings? Nah. Eagle's uh, Wings, did you say Eagle's Wings? Eagle's Wings, yeah. And um, I loved it, but I was going through that phase of being shy. Uh -huh. She was. She just turns around and she just goes, I'm so disappointed in you. I'm like, excuse me? She was like, it's selfish to not use what the Lord gave you. There's tons of people Ooh. you can. I never looked at it like that. So to know how bad it was that I was destroying selfishly, self-destructively killing what was given to me, that can be taken away at any given moment. Yeah. So, you know. But this is a journey, man. I, I'm, it's it's upward from here. I'm the type of person I just need results to see what I'm doing is working, and I'm <laughs> keep my heart. So, listen, you. I thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I mean, <laughs> what's that? Was it entertaining? It was good. Oh my god, it's it's amazing. Um, and I just have to say, um, since I was introduced to your music, you mentioned um, like the Go Easy on Me song. Oh my God. Amazing. Yeah, I've been over, playing yeah. it on repeat, but you know, what's been, uh, running through my mind. Why is a very important song? Because that was one that you did about recovery. That was super amazing. Everyone I'll leave links in the show notes, but, um, you know, what's been running through my mind is that line. I want it all. Oh, so much <laughs> from that song. Uh I and because it it's so like, and I'm like, I think that that is sort of, it speaks to sort of the root of our addiction. It's just that need for more. So right. <laughs> the need for distraction, the need for more. And 
Yeah, but uh, I love the song Go Easy On Me because I think you mentioned that you recorded that just before you went to rehab and it's such a vulnerable, beautiful song. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's a hard, like, I don't really remember that session at all because I knew you don't, it. You don't remember, you were high. <laughs> I was so, so drunk, but I knew what I was doing. I was like, yo, this is that last two raw. Like, you let that pain out, like, because I was sad singing it. Yeah. Oh, so, it's so raw and truthful, you know, and it's I so beautiful. I mean, there was beauty behind it, but there's a lot of pain. I knew what I was doing, but I also knew that was the last hurrah. But that was, there was such a level of vulnerability and honesty about that. Yeah. I, I just felt like that was the only way that I'd get the real out of it. And I also did why that day. and That same day? Yeah. I did the second half of it and I was down in my basement. Um, I was just dumb lit and I took my voice memo. And that's when I said, cause I was like three in the morning, I'm starting to kick the, uh, the mumble blackout stuff. And I just remember saying, before I lay me down to sleep, please remove these demons from me. And that's just, I just saw myself just falling asleep into the dream of like coming out of it, you know? And so, I just, like I said, music and being a creative, man, that's I swear to God, it saved my life. It's such I a did, great way to process grief and all your feelings. Yeah. And I hope, you know, anyone going through this, watching this, man, just the cliches are real for a reason. So, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Well, David, thank you so much for being so generous with your time and sharing from your heart such, um, it's so real. I, I just really appreciate you and all the work and your intention to help other people out of their suffering. So thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for having me and, you know, salute to you and what you've done. That's a great feat to accomplish. Thank you so much. You okay. have a great day. We'll talk soon.